guys, today I'm going to be teaching you a new game called Pounce. It is a card game. The purpose of this game is to try to be the first person to get rid of your Pounce pile, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. For this game, you're going to each need your own deck of cards. So something like this. They're going to each need to have a different design, as to this one's blue and this one's red. That could be like a pattern card, all sorts of different stuff. You just want to make sure you have different cards. You also are going to need a very large space to play this game. So a large table or a large spot on the floor will do. Alright, as I just mentioned, each player is going to have their own individual set of cards. First thing you're going to want to do is count your cards to make sure there's 52. We're not going to be playing with jokers. The next thing you're going to want to do is shuffle your deck of cards a few times. I'm only going to shuffle mine once for this because I've already shuffled this deck. The next thing you're going to do is count out 13 cards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and flip the 13th one face up. This is going to be your pounce pile. Next, we're going to flip over four cards to either the left or right of your pounce pile. These four cards are going to be your work piles. The remaining cards that are in your hand is going to be what we call the stockpile. Now, we're going to move on to each individual piece. Okay, so we're going to start with the work piles. Before I say anything else, if you've ever played Solitaire, that's what these four work piles are going to be very similar to. So when it comes to the work piles, they are built in descending numerical order, meaning they go from king to queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, all that sort of stuff. Aces naturally will get played out in the middle, which is what we'll talk about in a second. You always have four spaces. So like if this ace got played out here into the middle, a new card would fill this space because you always want to have four cards here. Okay, for those of you that have played solitaire, you'll understand this a little bit better. When building onto the work piles, they have to be built in black, red, black, red. So like right here, we have a black six, a red five, and then a black four. They do not have to be the same suit. Also, if you have, like, this is a red jack with a black 10. If I wanted to consolidate this to this black queen, I can move both of these cards over to there, just like in solitaire. So as I just showed you how I consolidated this work pile over here onto the black queen, now there would be an empty space for a work pile to go here. This is where we can start to bring in our pounce pile, the pile of 13 cards. You would move the top card into a slot, and it could be here, 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 and then you would flip the next one over. Your pounce pile cards can only be moved into an empty work pile zone to build onto one of your work piles or if it can be played out in the middle. The point is to try to get be the first to get rid of your 13 cards and when you get rid of all 13 cards in this pile you would say pounce and the round would end which will demonstrate that here in just a bit. The next pile we're going to talk about is the stockpile which was all the remaining cards you had left in your deck after you started your board. So with the stockpile, you can only flip over three cards at a time. So you go one, two, three, and flip. With the stockpile, this top card can be played out into the common area, which I said we'll talk about, or it can be played to build. So I have a red nine. This could be played on top of the black ten. This helps if you have a card underneath it that would need to be played out there. Just a reminder, with your work piles, you don't always have to build. So I didn't have to put that nine there if I didn't want it to. And I could continue to flip another three cards and keep going. This just helps so that you don't get stuck, hopefully, during a round. Okay, before I explain this last pile, which are the foundation piles, I'm going to clarify that th when it comes to this area out here, the foundation piles in the common area, these are where everyone's playing on. So everyone has their own boards that look something like this. So one could be over here, one could be across, but everyone's allowed to play on these cards out in the middle. The only cards that can be played onto these out in the middle are the card facing up from your pounce pile, an exposed card in your work pile, or the first card in your stockpile when you flip them. So the foundation piles are started when a player plays an ace out into the area. So someone played an ace. In this example, somebody 
one of the players has played the two of hearts next, then the three of hearts. So the next card that would be allowed to be played out there would be the four of hearts. So I have the four of hearts. If I was the first quickest player, I could try to play the four of hearts on top of that. I'd flip my pounce card, and we get to keep going. And look, I would have more. So there's a three of diamonds out here. I have a four of diamonds, so I could play my four of diamonds out here. Somebody could play their five. But oh, wait, I have my five, so I'm going to try to play my five again. Flip flip okay I don't have anything so I would keep going to try to get something meanwhile everyone else is doing the same thing so if I don't have a card that could be if I don't have a card that can be played on this another player might have it and that's how you keep all these different piles just going going and going okay the next big piece on these foundation piles out in the middle as you can see this one's added queen so the last card to be played would be a king on that so I mean somebody out here's played this queen if I had the king right here, when I go to play that king, instead of playing it face down or face up, you play it face down to show that that pile is now done. It's complete. The last big piece of information you need before we play an actual game is how do you win? How do you keep score? So the purpose of this game is to pounce, to get rid of all your cards here. So if I were to be the person to pounce and say, I played this, okay, I flipped it. Okay, I've moved my last card out of my pounce pile. I'm going to say pounce. Everything stops. Good news is if you're the person that pounces, you don't have to count up anything here. Okay, let's say when that person that I just talked about pounced and this was your pounce pile instead, you would count up all these cards. So you'd go one, two, three, four, five, and multiply it by two. So you had five cards left in your pounce pile, which really equals up to ten. These are the only cards that matter when a round ends. So you'd get rid of all your other cards and put them back into here. So this person has 10. The person that pounced has zero from their pounce pile. The next part would be to grab all these cards that have been played out here into the middle. And like I said before, each card is going to have different design. So you're going to divide the cards back out into their design. So you'd be like, here, if these had different designs, you'd put them over here and so on. Okay, so let's say these are the cards that the person that pounced had played out into the middle that they got back. They would count these up. So let's say this person had 16 cards. This person gets 16 points. Meanwhile, this person that had the five cards left over, which equals 10, had 14 cards left. So since they had 10, now they gotta take 14 minus 10 because they had their pounce cards left. So the pounce cards left subtract points from your total score. So they had 14 cards, 10 points in this. They only get four points for the round. The point is, or the goal is to try to get to 100 points. All right, so here we have an example of four players playing the game. This helps give you a better idea of how all players are playing all at the same time. As you watch... You can see different players building on their work piles, looking through their stockpiles, and playing out onto the foundation's piles. Right here during a round, it shows an example situation you can be in. When two players go to play their card at the exact same time, whoever's card gets there first is who gets to play the card. As a round comes to an end, someone will eventually pounce out, as is shown in this example. Pounce! After a person has pounced out, everyone will count the cards left in their pounce pile. Then one person will grab all the cards that were played into the foundation pounce and divide them up. After this, players will each get their cards back and count them and score as we talked about earlier. Hey guys, so as you just saw, we just played an example round to kind of give you an idea of what a round looks like. In a real game, you would play multiple rounds to try to get to that 100 points we talked about. I hope you really enjoy this game and have fun playing it. Oh.